Be seated. On behalf of the faculty, staff, Board of Education, and the whole community of, of Kenton, we certainly welcome you tonight's commencement exercises for this class of, of 2000. Commencement in America is, is like nothing else. It's a great opportunity. It's the, the sending out of these young people into the world. It's the, the mom and dad saying, okay, kids, go get a job. Uh, it, it's a great American experience, nothing else like it. So we do and, and particularly welcome you tonight to this commencement exercise. would like to introduce uh, Board of Education members and platform guests for you this evening. Our board president, Mr. Charles Dixon, Chuck Dixon. Our Vice President, Russ Cahill. Board members, Tim Newman, Tim Stryker, Sandra Winnett. Our Clerk Treasurer of the Board of Education, Steve Ashba. I think everybody knows Mr. Roberts, our high school principal. And he will be introducing later on our speaker for this evening, Cindy Murray. At this time, it does give me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to you the president of the class of 2000, Bradford C. Blue. My fellow seniors, today, is the day that we, the graduating class of 2000, will reach a milestone and major part of our lives that seemed impossible and so far away 13 years ago. Entering kindergarten, graduation seemed like a lifetime away, and in many ways it was. Growing up from year to year and moving from elementary to middle school to high school, our entire childhood was based on each other's lives and with this basis, we grew into a mentally strong and emotionally close class before we even reached high school. Our parents and our community enabled us to mature into the role that we play in today. We are now the older ones, and it is now time for us to, to receive our well-deserved diplomas, for we have worked hard for them, as displayed in our many accomplishments throughout our 13-year journey. The overall accomplishments of our class are those that we will be able to look back upon and brag about. First of all, our class has been part of four years of quality athletics and have left marks of dignity and pride throughout our town, league, and state. Some of the accomplishments include a Western Buckeye League football championship ending in Kenton's first ever playoff berth. And then our class led Kenton back into the playoffs, making it to the second round this year. Our class was also part of a baseball team that qualified for the state semifinals. And we have had various qualifiers compete at the state track competitions. 
We have also been part of a first class music and theater department as we have had a choir who received a one rating at the state competition the past two years. The band performed every Friday night along with the football team and also performed in several other competitions as well. And the top 20 in theater departments has put on numerous productions that will be remembered by all who witnessed. These accomplishments outside of the classroom have installed a large sense of pride throughout the community as we put all of our skills and abilities into representing a community that has given everything to us. However, these accomplishments that demonstrate the array of talent graduating today will not get us as far as the standards and accomplishments that we set inside the classroom. These academic, academic accomplishments are the real reason why we are here today and the ones we should be proud of most. This class is a class of hard workers and has been noticed, for there has been many thousands of dollars given through scholarships and various other grants to help prepare us for the future. And a vast majority of us know what we want to do and are already prepared to take the next step. Our largest accomplishment that we will leave with is the high results that we achieved on the senior proficiency tests. With these results, we have set the standard for future classes, and for the time being, we are able to call ourselves the hardest working and the smartest class since the initiation of these tests. This accomplishment is not only something to be proud of, but it is also a prediction of the future, for it shows that we are hard workers and ready to make an impact on the present and future workforce. It is at this time that I would like to thank everyone who had a part in helping to, get where we, to help us to get where we are today. First of all, the teachers, for they helped us to excel to the best of our abilities in the classroom and were there to lend a helping hand when we would stumble and fall behind. Next would be to the community, for this community is the most caring of any other in the area and was always there to, do, to donate money and sponsor various events and activities, giving its utmost respect to our, and support to our abilities throughout the 13 years of school. Most of all, our parents deserve the most credit and biggest thanks. They are the ones who gave up their time, used all of their patience, and would go to extremes to make sure we were getting the most out of our education and scholastic experience. They are the ones who unconditionally loved us, cared for us, and supported us through everything, and everything is exactly what they deserve. Last but not least, seniors of the class of 2000, it is time to thank your friends and yourselves for everything that you have decided to, and chosen to take from this journey and experience. It is time to take pride in all of your accomplishments, especially this day, because everyone here has earned it. And it is time to move on with our lives, discover new things, meet new people, and find our place in the world. For today, we have received the future. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Excellent job. It's now my pleasure to introduce our second class speaker today, not second class, uh, our second class speaker, and that is Ms. Susan Paul. Well, this is it, our final time together as a complete class, the class of 2000. We have come a long way, and until now, many of our decisions and ideas have been made by, or greatly influenced by, our parents and our peers. But now the inevitable time has come for us to make our own decisions, decisions that will affect us for the rest of our lives. Many of us will continue our educations in colleges and technical schools. Others will choose to serve in the military. Some will find jobs and start families. No matter what our various career goals are, I'm sure that our personal goals are very similar. 
We all want to be successful in whatever plans we pursue. The term success carries various definitions for different people. My definition of success is very different from the prominent definition in the game of life. I'm sure most of us have played the game of life, where each player drives around in a car and becomes involved in important real life situations, such as deciding whether or not to go to college, choosing a career, getting married, buying a house, and having children. As a player drives around, he or she collects life cards that are exchanged for money at the end of the game. The purpose of the game is to have the most money at the end. My theory of success differs with the purpose of the game in relation to real life. Money can buy a lot of things, but it cannot buy happiness. People who spend their whole lives in pursuit of money may miss out on the priceless things life has to offer. I encourage the class of 2000 to refuse to exchange life cards for money. Search for the life cards, the experiences in life that are unforgettable and cannot be bought. Have a picnic, run for mayor, run a marathon. Yes, careers and money are important, but do not let them hinder your living life to its fullest. Savor each small but important experience and event. No matter what decision you make at this point, the beginning of the game of life, life cards are around every corner. Recognize them, pursue them, and treasure them. Thank you, Susan. And now uh, for our third senior class speaker, Ms. Audrey Torma. of the Kenton High School class of 2000. It seems like only yesterday when we were putting Elmer's glue in people's hair, coloring between the lines and yelling childish phrases like, liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh wait, that was yesterday. Never mind. Anyways, how many people here like tomato soup? Go on, raise your hand. Who likes tomato soup? No? Okay. Well, thank you. That was a really simple question, right? You either like it or you don't. I wish high school had been that easy. However, as we all know, it wasn't. From the cut, color, and paste projects in kindergarten to the 12th grade proficiency tests in high school, it's been an uphill climb. We've had conflicts with parents, teachers, friends, homework, and jobs. Most of these are just pale reflections of the problems that life will throw at us in the coming years. But in high school, we have learned coping skills. We have started to understand when to argue and when to accept, when to stand firm and when to compromise. We recognize situations that need our focused concentration and times when we can kick back and ignore the details. We know how to make friends, and we also know when we have to go it alone. Now, we are ready to move on to bigger challenges but we will never forget what we've gained from Kenton High School. Remember the good times. Most of all, remember the people who helped you to get where you are now. You are now the captain of your own ship. And your friends, family, and teachers have given you a compass. It's up to you which direction you'd like to go. Right now I'd like to share with you a piece by an Arthur, author that um, many of us were first introduced to way back when we were in kindergarten. It's called Where the Places Will Go by Dr. Seuss. <laughs> the first and last sections read, Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know, 
and you are the guy who will decide where to go. You look up and down the streets, look them over with care. About some you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down a not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there, in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen, and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stoop. You'll go right along, you'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. And will you succeed? Yes, you will, indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So, be your name Foxbaum or Big C or Bray, or Mordecai Alley Van Allen O'Shea, you're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. I always did think Dr. Seuss said it best, so follow your dreams and do it his best. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And now uh, I would like to introduce Brad Blue again, who will be continuing a 96-year-old tradition of uh, presenting the spoon to junior class uh, president, Aaron Kapanka. The passing of the spoon is a tradition that has been carried on at Kenton High School, High School since 1904 or even earlier. On the spoon, each class since 1904 has left an engraving, painting, or plaque that represents the year of their graduation. With this marking, the spoon is passed to the president of the next graduating class. So it is now at this time that I would like to pass the spoon on to you in the graduating class of 2001. I ask that you treat this tradition with unconditional respect, as almost a century of Kenton High School graduates have. And we, the class of 2000, would like to wish all of you the best of luck in the many endeavors that you will face as a group and as individuals as you begin to prepare yourselves for the future. Thank you, Brad and Aaron. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker for this evening. She is a 1982 graduate of Kenton High School, also a 1988 graduate of Ohio State University, and then received her master's degree from the University of Finley in 1996. She is presently the senior manufacturing engineer at Meritor Automotive and a very good person. And I'm very happy to introduce our speaker tonight, Ms. Cindy Murray. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, for that kind introduction. Mr. Sturgeon, Board of Education, Class of 2000, faculty, parents, relatives, and friends. Before I begin, I would like to thank Mr. Roberts for asking me to speak tonight. I consider it, consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to personally address the graduates and to wish them the best of luck. Congratulations to the Class of 2000, the first graduating class of Kenton High School in the new millennium. You've labored 13 long years, and your hard work and dedication is going to be rewarded tonight. We're here to honor you and to wish you the best. I have had the privilege of getting to know a few of you the past few years through 4-H and sports. I've watched you mature into fine young adults. I've watched you grow from followers to leaders. I've watched you set excellent examples to the underclassmen. You have a lot to be proud of. Success, what is it to you? My definition is when a person strives to be the best they can each and every day at whatever they do. When they use their head and put their heart into every endeavor. 
It's not based on what type of car you drive or the brand names on your clothes. It is about giving 100%. In the game of life, it doesn't matter what the final score is. It is about your effort, how you apply yourself. Take a look at yourself and those around you right now. You all have different stories about how you got here tonight, came down different roads and faced different obstacles. But you are achievers. You committed yourself to this one goal of graduation. Tonight, you are a success. But what does it take to be successful once you leave Kenton High School? Well, growing up, one of my favorite stories was The Wizard of Oz. As you journey into life, all you have to do is look at the characters in the story, and they will guide you. Let's look at the scarecrow. What was he looking for? A brain. Everyone knows you have to have knowledge to be successful. But let's take this idea one step further. Knowledge will get you nowhere unless you have the mental and physical desire to be better every day. Take pride in whatever you do. In order to improve, compete against someone better, smarter than you. Challenge yourself to higher levels. Surround yourself with intelligent, upbeat people and grow together. Don't let others hold you down. The scarecrow regarded himself a fool because he had no brains. But time and time again in the story, we see him finding solutions to his companion's problems. One lesson I learned early in my career was that although I had the engineering and the business degree, the people with years of experience and a degree from the school of hard knocks often had better ideas and solutions to the problems than I. Listen and learn something from everyone with whom you have contact. Although their backgrounds and beliefs may be different, hear what they have to say. Diversity in education, culture, gender, and color is what leads to creative and innovative ideas. If you take my advice, you will find that the learning process does not stop here tonight. Make it a goal to try to learn something new every day. Next came the Tin Man. All he wanted was a heart. He believed that he must be careful not to hurt anyone because he had no heart to guide him. But actually, it was his faith and respect that prevented him from harming others. As you journey into life, open your heart and allow faith and respect to guide you. Faith allows you to know what's right from wrong in any situation. It allows you to make good decisions. It teaches you to put others first. Faith gives you strength to take the bumps in the road, to weather the storm. No matter what obstacles you face, never give up. Trust me, you will have good days and you will have bad days. Allow your heart to guide you. Respect is another important quality to possess. Respect yourself, your parents, and those with whom you live and work. The two people I respect most in my life are my parents. They have given me love and guidance, showed me the importance of believing in myself and respecting others, and the encouragement for standing up for what I feel is right. For these and many other gifts, I thank them. The third part, person in the party was the cowardly lion. At one point, the wizard tells the lion that, quote, there is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger. True courage is in facing danger when you are afraid. So how does this apply to success? Have the courage to go after your dreams. In everyday life, we are often setting high standards for ourselves. But don't be afraid of failure. Don't fear what other people may think. Accept the challenges and learn from the failures you come across in life. Think about it as a space shuttle aimed for the space station. It isn't a matter of taking aim and firing a straight shot. If you did this, chances are you'd miss it by thousands of miles. Instead, mission control is continuously correcting the shuttle's flight for any errors detected. If these errors go uncorrected, they become more and more exaggerated until finally you miss your window of opportunity. So the faster you recognize, admit, and correct your errors, the more precisely you stay on target. Success is error driven. When you stumble, it becomes your opportunity to make corrections. So have the courage to follow your dreams. And when you stumble, stop, smile, learn, and grow. Finally, it is Dorothy's heart desire that is the story's most important theme. She simply wants to go home. When Dorothy describes for the scarecrow how flat and colorless Kansas is, he does not understand why she would want to leave such a beautiful place as the Emerald City to go back home. 
Dorothy's response is that famous line, there's no place like home. Dorothy yearns for her home where her aunt and uncle love her and where she feels she belongs. I think you will find that the same is true for all of you. Never forget your families and friends. The people and the relationships that mean the most in your life should be top priority. Don't let work or school overshadow these priorities. Find a passion and get involved in your community. I have a friend who has a daughter who was always complaining about how stupid and boring their hometown was. The mother's reply to the daughter was, you have two options. One, you can leave and never look back, or two, you can hang around and try to make a difference. No matter where you call home, get involved and try to make that difference. Most of all, be happy. Have a positive approach to life. It's too short to go through it in a sour, negative mood. You will find that happiness is not a matter of good fortune or worldly possessions. It comes from appreciating what we have, not about being miserable about what we don't have. My father always tells me, you can be happy doing anything if you want to be. It's all a state of mind. And so, graduates, make this world you are about to enter a better one by giving 100%. Like the scarecrow, use your brain and challenge your abilities. Like the Tin Man, follow your heart when dealing with family, friends, and co-workers. Like the cowardly lion, have the courage to chase your dreams with energy and enthusiasm. And most importantly, like Dorothy, cherish that someplace you call home, that place where you belong and you feel you are loved. Be sure to live life to the fullest and make each day count. Take your chances. Go for it. Create your own yellow brick road in this world. You can do it. You deserve it. And if you make your own best contribution, you will find the happiness that does lie on the other side of the rainbow. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Cindy. Excellent job. Uh, I guess we're getting real close, guys, to the, uh, the part you came here for, and I just want to say a couple things. First of all, it's great to see such a huge crowd here, and I realize that not one of you came to listen to me talk. Um, so, <laughs> but... I would be remiss if I didn't say a couple things to the graduating class of 2000. First of all, congratulations, you've made it. Uh, hasn't always been easy, uh, 13 years with many teachers, countless homework assignments, and many, just many, many struggles, and you've done a fine job. Second thing is good luck, you'll need it. Uh, you're leaving here where you're kind of the top dogs and wherever you go, whether that's into the workplace, onto uh, college, into the service, uh, you will go in at the bottom rung again and you've got to prove yourself all over. And you'll continue to have to do that throughout your whole life, so, so good luck. And the third thing, thank you. I'm sure you don't realize it, but you have been an excellent senior class. Uh, many times I've kind of yelled at some people, but uh, this is, parents, you've done a wonderful job raising these fine young ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know Mr. Barrett and I talked at the Honors Day thing about how, not only how much they received as far as uh, scholarships and that sort of thing, but just what nice people they are. How polite they are, not only to each other, but everyone else. Uh, and, and you've done a fine job, and seniors, you've done a fine job. So again, thank you. Without further ado then, Mr. Sturgeon, Mr. Dixon, Board of Education, it is my pleasure to announce that these 126 fine young ladies and gentlemen have met the requirements of the state of Ohio and of Kenton City Schools and are thereby eligible for graduation. So Aaron and Brooke, if you would start bringing the first group up, we will defer to the diplomas. The first graduating member of the class of 2000, Jessica Jean Alford.
Todd Andrew Amway. Ruth Aaron Ansley, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Nicholas Wade Barker. Ryan Jonathan Bates. Michelle Joanna Boffman. DeLacy Joy Berry. Christy Ann Black. Bradford Cameron Blue, graduating with distinction and receiving an honors diploma. Jesse Patrick Bourne, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Daniel David Broski, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Leanne Nicole Brown. Carolyn K. Bourbon. Heidi Lee Burson, graduating with distinction. Troy Wayne Canode, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Melissa Ryan Serta Richards, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Brianne Nicole Clay. Kirsten Christelle Clyborne. Aaron Christopher Ponkel. Sarah Denise Connor. Andrew Russ Korn. Crystal Ann Kozad. Dustin Timothy Kramer. Krista Lachelle Cummins. Kristen Lee Dickerson. Stephanie S. Diltz. Kevin Michael Drum. Angela Joelle Dunson. Graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Sean Michael Dyer, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Nicola Ann Engel. Daniel Allen Evans. Heidi Nicole Fowler. Amy Jo Fur. Darren James Fur. Nina Gammenthaler. Barney Gammon, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Eric Jason Gossard, honored with an honors diploma. Craig Allen Graber. Charles Raymond Grosso, Jr. Tanya Michelle Gunnett.
Benjamin Nicholas Hamilton. Amanda Marie Harris. Amanda Lee Howdenshield. Chad Lewis Heilman. Russell Matthew Hicks. Stephanie Nicole Higgins, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Ronald Lee Hildreth. Adam Christopher Heights. Christopher Stephen Hoffman. Teresa Jeanette Hoffman. Robert Francis Holbrook. Adam Jonathan Horner. Catherine Naomi Horner. Ashley Jonelle Hauser, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Derek Andrew Howe, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Travis Kenneth Jenkins. Clint Carl Jolliffe. Jason Paul Jones. Bridget Jean Joseph. Candy Joe Lawrence. James Edward Lease. Nathaniel Adam Lowe. <laughs> Jennifer Renee Madison. Russell Wayne Madison. Brandon Earl Manns. <laughs> Kenneth Eli Manns. <laughs> Nicole May Martin. <laughs> Jonathan Michael Mock. Ryan Reed Maynard. Sarah Laurie McCalla. Ashley Marie McElroy. Jeannie Marie McNeely. Aaron John James McPherson. Kip Tyler Menser, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Lynn Ann Menser, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Keith Lewis Merchant, graduating with distinction. Amber Renee Miller, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma.
Jacob Benjamin Moore. Megan Elizabeth Moore, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Natasha Tommy Moore. Nicole Elaine Moore. Matthew James Murphy. Lindsay Diane Newman. Lindy Marie Newman, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Melina Ann Oates. Brandy Joe Onions. Susan Denise Paul, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Jory Lynn Feaster. Bridget Elizabeth Piper, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Natisha Elaine Poe. <laughs> Melissa Sue Prater. <laughs> Jeremy Paul Purcell. <laughs> Courtney Ann Rader. Anne Marie Radway, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Brianne J. Richardson. Cynthia Marie Richardson. Nicole Renee Rigsby. John Thomas Risch. Bradley John Roll, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Jennifer Renee Scott. Dennis Frank Siebert, Jr. Jolene Evelyn Siebert. Thomas Eugene Seiler. Licia Ashley Smith. Matthew Phillips Smith. Joshua Daniel Sprang, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Sarah Elizabeth Steinman, graduating with distinction. Casey Lee Stevens. Jennifer Lynn Stevens, graduating with distinction. <laughs> Kelly Nicole Stevens. Christopher Summa. Austin 
Audrey Jean Torma, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Jonathan Lee Troyer. Shelley Renee Wagner, graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. Jacob William Ward. <laughs> Natasha Jane Weaver, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Amy Jo Whitaker, graduating with high distinction and an honors diploma. Brad Philip Wilkerson, Graduating with distinction and an honors diploma. James David Wilson. Tara Ann Wilson. Amanda Lee Whitmire. Matthew William Worthington. Benjamin Ryan Rosman. Amanda Renee Wren. Are we out? And the final graduating senior from the class of 2000, Lance Dwight Young. Okay, senior stand up. Seniors, I now pronounce you graduates, you may move your tassels.